Hey guys, I'm going to do a little quick add on here before you get into my video. Been a long three weeks with my dad. I'm not getting a lot of rest. So uh, at one point, when I first talking about anten two meter antennas, I refer to them as single sideband antenna. I'm talking about a Yagi antenna. So don't, don't get confused on that. Also, I'm going to clip another video on here. K5YVY. Uh, Joe Brett has got a video out called the Ham Shack Hoarder. It's pretty funny. I think y'all enjoy it. Guys, hope you enjoy this video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you three. Hey, good evening, guys. It's KB5MIQ Big Boy. Got a couple of social media things we're going to talk about tonight. Some stuff I've seen you guys post on social media. Come on up here, Ham Radio Cat. Well, come on. Come on. Let everybody see you. It's, it's National Black Cat Day. <laughs> Wham Radio Cats Day. All right. Let me pull up this first one I found. See all kinds of stuff people post on social media. We're going to go over two or three of them tonight. Okay. One of them, what conditions would be in order for two meters to open up? Open up to the point where I could work someone states away or further from a mountaintop with an HT in northwest Georgia. How often does two meter open up and should it open up anytime soon? Well, honestly, two meters does open up on occasion. And it opens up, you know, usually in the mornings, the cooler mornings. One thing I've always heard, and I think it's pretty good standard, if you're driving to work one day and you listen to your favorite radio station that comes in strong any other day of the week, but it's coming in messed up that day, it's usually going to make some VHF openings. Um, actually, that's how I got Arkansas. I got a car from Arkansas. I got a 150 mile simplex, but I was not on an HT. And that's the kicker. HT's probably not gonna be good for that. You're gonna have to have an elevated single sideband antenna and you're gonna be lucky if you get states away. I got 150 miles one time and it didn't last long. Um, if you're within adjoining states and you've got within a hundred mile range, you could probably do some reliable, if you've got reliable communication, if you've got an elevated single side band or Yagi's type antenna. We done some experimenting from Queen Wilhelmina State Park back to our home area here. In fact, I'll tag those two videos. You'll just have to watch the video of the of the ham fest and see where I've linked them in there, pieced them in there, but we used HTs from the mountaintop to talk a hundred miles back here and there wasn't a band opening. But we were using Yagi antennas that we were holding by either by hand with a five watt talkie or had them on like a six foot mast over our head on top of the, we were 2,500 foot in the air on top of the mountain. For something reliable like that, with mountains in the way, you're probably not ever going to get to make that work, especially with an HT. You'll have to look at other means of communication for that type of for that type of application, anyway. But check out these videos. Uh, Jeff and I did it one year with Cody down in Decap, 100 miles. Cody standing in his yard with his three element Yagi hooked to his talkie normal height, standing height. Jeff and I had it on about a six foot mast on the, on the uh, mountain top up there. The next year Jeff did it and started turning his power down and was actually still able to talk to Tim and Cody down here in decal on a half watt from up there with his, but again, he was using a three element Yankee antenna 
and they were on their base units down here. So for the type of communication you're talking about there, it's probably not ever going to be reliable. So you'd have to think about something else. Guys, I'm gonna, this may get a little long-winded, but I, and I can't find the original post. But somebody had asked, it was a new guy, trying to learn antennas, how to figure radiated power at the antenna versus what your radio says it's putting out. Say your radio is a 100-watt radio. Well, first off, on single side band PEP, you're not putting out a full 100 watts. You're putting out what's called peak envelope power, which is transmitting off your voice. Probably averaging 60 to 75 watts, depending on your voice peaks and your mic gain settings and all that. Uh, I've never figured that. I'm not going to tell you how to figure that because I've never figured it. What I want to caution you on, getting into this hobby and trying to grasp every super technical formula right off the bat without actually getting your hands on and, and getting on the radio, that could cause people not to, not to try to stay in it. And I don't know if I'm wording this right, so y'all bear with me. I'll give you an example. I've been a shooter, hunter, fisherman all my life. Reloader. And uh, that's the one hobby that I've never minded spending money on. <laughs> Versus ham radio. I got two estates give to me. Both of them had a box of ammunition in it for a gun I didn't have. So I just bought the gun <laughs> to go with the box of shells. <laughs> I would have done that with ham radio, but that's just me. A friend of mine, I was about 39 years old, been reloading since I was 19. He was a little older than me, wanted about 10 years older, wanted to get in a reload. So I told him a set to get. Well, he immediately delved into the analyzing every aspect of it. First question, big boy, how many grains of powder is in a pound of powder? I don't know. I just load my mouth. Then he come back, well, there's this many grains in a pound of powder, and if I load with this powder, I get this many more bullets, this many more. I said, hold it, Jake. you got to find a load you like. You're analyzing this too much. Dump some powder in a case and shoot. You're going to analyze yourself or you're not going to want to do this hobby. Next thing, I bought a box of 500 bullets. There's 504 in there. You counted them? Don't you? And heck no, i got better things to do. They don't count them anyway. They weigh them. Sometimes you get 501, sometimes you get 505. I said, I'm not going to count them because if they give me 499, I'm not going to ask them for one bullet. And if they give me 505, I'm not giving five back. So I don't count them. I said, you're overanalyzing this. This is supposed to be fun. And he's deceased now, but the last time I talked to him some years later, he had never loaded the first round. That's why... I do this channel and recommend you guys learning and using simple antennas, building simple dipoles, and getting on there and making contacts. Now, if you really can get into the antenna making and understand electronics and theory good, more power to you. Go for that. Figure that stuff up. But I'll give you this thought. You're running a, you're set up at a 100 watt radio and you, whatever line loss you've got, the type of antenna you got, say you're only putting 50 watts out at the antenna on 10 meters. And you talk to South African station on skip and you're 5'9". Same thing, I get on there, say my radio setup is a little different, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. Say I actually get 70 watts at the antenna. I'm still 5'9". Same contact, same signal strength. I'm not saying that's not pertinent information, but I, what I don't want you to do is go down the rabbit hole of trying right off the bat, wow, this is important, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn this, and not get on air and having fun with it. Because if you don't get on the air and have fun with this to start with, I promise you probably won't stay in. And looking at the numbers, one of my earlier videos showing how many techs in the last seven, eight years hadn't renewed, sad hams, and getting overwhelmed in the hobby, I think is two things that stop that. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed. That's why I recommend build a simple single band dipole. 
get it as high as the air as you can. Make sure you understand how to check SWR if your radio does not have, especially if your radio doesn't have a built-in SWR protection circuit in it. And get on the air and make contacts. Learn this. Read up a little bit. Read into the antenna theory a little more. The AWR handbook is a great way to start that. And they've got an antenna handbook. It's a little more technical, but you'll have but if you can handle it, go for it. But guys, if you don't have any antenna, electrical, electronic background, and you're learning all this from start one, keep it simple. Take your time. Don't get caught up in all these formulas right off the bat. Learn how to make a simple dipole and get on the air and have fun with it. And the rest will come naturally as you get into the hobby. Another post on here. And I, this, I don't know why, I don't really understand why this guy come up with this, but, all right, where is that? I'm forced to make a 75 foot run with coax and antenna, how can I lower SWR? Well, length of coax really ain't got that much to do with it. It really don't have anything to do with it. You gotta make sure you know how to set your antenna up and cut it for the right frequency. And if it needs trimmed, adjusted, whatever the type of antenna. If you're cutting a dipole, you'll either have to trim it or lengthen it, depending on where, you're, where it's resonant at. If you're assembling an antenna from scratch, a factory antenna, it's going to tell you how to adjust your SWR. The only thing you got to be sure with coax is it's not shorted, and you've got a good connection on both ends of your cable. The length of the coax is not going to affect your SWR. Just learn how to check your antennas and set it up and understand that accordingly. I've got to run a coax right now I'm having trouble with. It's not having bad SWRs, it's not letting anything come through it. So, all kinds of stuff you get to look at, but length of coax is not a problem. All right, guys, that's about all I can think of. There's some other stuff on there, but I don't want to get too redundant. I'm not going to get into the Guys keep bringing up about CW and some people keep saying us no code extras or not good hams or whatever. I'm not even going to get into that. Guys, we're at 1585. We're still going to give something away at 1600. Uh, remember Main Trading Company in Paris, Texas. They're shut down this weekend moving, but they're fixing to open up in the new location the first part of the week. Um, Got a radio repair you need done? Check old Dan Majors out. His uh, slides at the front of my video with uh, his instru his contact info on it. Thanks again, everybody who subscribed to the channel. It's KB5MIQB Bowl. Same three.